Hi, we will see the Lamport timestamp algorithm for parallel and distributed systems. Lamport algorithm is intended to improve the safety in the usage of shared resources. The algorithm of Lamport's timestamps is a single algorithm used to determine the order of events in a distributed computer systems. This is a non-token based algorithm for the mutual exclusion as it does not use any token which needs to be passed but works on processes which are registered and which acquire for more resources on the timestamp that they have acquired the resources for or they are requesting the resources for. This algorithm is used to provide a partial ordering of events with minimum overhead and conceptually provide a starting point for the more advanced vector clock method. It works on clock synchronization that is at the time the process has requested for a particular resource then the timestamp with the clock synchronization is registered and then on that timestamp the critical state is released so that the particular process can enter its critical state. This logical clock can be thought of as a clock that only has a meaning in relation to the messages moving between the processes. So each process communicate with the other process on the basis of the timestamp of the logical clock that it is using. When a process receives a message, it resynchronizes its logical clock with that of a sender. So the Lamport algorithm, every site SI keeps the request queue where it keeps track of all the logical clock synchronization that has come from different processes when they are requesting for a resource so that they can enter its critical state. Contains the mutual exclusion request ordered by their timestamp and messages to be delivered in the first in first out order between every pair of site. It follows a queue data structure where the requests are stored in the first come first serve manner. A process increments its counter before each event in that process that is when it asks for a request it increments its counter. When a process sends a message it includes its counter value with that message that is suppose a process has asked for a resource it uses the resource and then releases it but the next time when it is asking for a resource then the counter for the message will be incremented by 1. On receiving a message the counter of the recipient is updated if necessary to the greater of its current counter and the timestamp in the received message. So all these three things that is the process which is asking for a particular request, its request message counter and its timestamp all three, three, three things will be stored and sent to the other process. The counter is then incremented by one before the message is considered received or it enters into its critical state. Let's say there are three sites S1, S2 and S3. S1 and S2 request for a critical state but S2 is the first with a timestamp that is on the logical clock of synchronization S2 has acquired the timestamp first. So S2 should be the first one to enter the critical state. Now here is how the processes will be requesting for the, from the other processes about the resources to enter the critical state. Now from this S1, S2, S3 you will see the messages passed on to all the other two processes. From S1 it goes here to S2 and it goes to S3. From S2 it goes to S1 and it goes to S3. Here the message is 2, 1 on the critical state that it needs and it has asked for a resources. S2 receives as 1 and 2 as these are the two things where the message needs to be passed it has requested. It again has the request execution and the release of the critical state. Three step all the algorithms follow is first is requesting of the critical state and then executing in the critical state and then releasing from the critical state so that the resources can be used by other processes. As S2 has asked for the first time, the timestamp of S2 is first. So S2 will enter the critical state first over here. 
Now this is what it is there 1 and 2 but 2 has the first time stamp so it will enter into the critical state first over here and same thing it is there for the first one so it enters the, the message is passed on to S2 and this is where it shows that S2 has entered the critical says with the permission from both the resources available from S1 and the site S3. Once S2 has entered the critical state then what happens is it releases that now he has released all the resources which were there and now when these resources are released then what happens is the S1 will enter into the critical state and the message is passed that it is releasing so now S2 exists, exits its critical state and S1 will enter its critical state over here and this how it proves that S1 can enter the critical state only after S2 releases it. Thank you.